We continue the conversation of Big Ben calling it a career. The breaking news here on CBS Sports HQ. This was the second of two Super Bowl titles for Ben Roethlisberger. What a game that was. Back and forth till the very end. San Antonio Holmes making that catch, keeping his feet in, and ultimately having the Pittsburgh Steelers edge out the Arizona Cardinals in that Super Bowl. Guy that was... On that team, a teammate of Ben Roethlisberger, our guy, Brian McFadden, joining us over the phone. BMAC, what are your thoughts here on Ben Roethlisberger officially <laughs> retiring today? Oh, man, the ultimate true competitor at the quarterback position. Um, outstanding professional career. You talked about the, being a two-time Super Bowl champion, you know, rookie of the year in 2004. Uh, look at the, the the quarterbacks that were drafted in the first round. Ben outplayed both quarterbacks in Phillip Rivers and Eli Manning. You know, Pro Bowl guy as well. Future first ballot Hall of Famer. I mean, he did everything but live up to the building when they drafted him in Pittsburgh. Um, he fit what the city has been, what the city is. You know, hard worker, a guy that does not mind getting dirty and doing his job, and most importantly, just winning being the ultimate team player and becoming an ultimate winner. What can you share with us in terms of something about uh, Big Ben, maybe a story that most people don't know, the side of Big Ben that we don't get to see maybe all the time on the field? Big Ben got a nice hoop game. <laughs> like, like on the court, like Big Ben got a nice, smooth hoop game, Tommy. Earlier in my career in Pittsburgh during the offseason, we had a traveling basketball team. So we would travel – to different cities near Pittsburgh and play different teams that were um, assembled together. Sometimes we would play, uh, like, small colleges. Sometimes we play, you know, um, recreational park-like leagues. And people would come to see us to play. They would pay to see us play against these different teams. And every now and then, Big Ben would play. And, he, and when he played, the gyms were always filled to capacity. No surprise there. But Big Ben with the ball in his hand, Tommy. I mean, at the top of the key, he had a smooth stroke. Uh, he had a nice off-dribble game as well. He saw the floor well, no surprise, because he played quarterback. But he was a real talented, athletic guy, well round athletic guy, not just on the football field. But I, I don't think a lot of people would think of Big Ben as a guy who can play basketball as well as he did. But that's the first thing. Now, when I saw him, because you know, Tommy, you can kind of tell if someone got some – can play basketball a little bit, just how they go through the layup line and go th and do their layups. When I saw Big Ben in the layup line, I'm like, okay, Big Ben might have a little something. Then seeing him with the basketball in his hand with that smooth stroke, I'm like, yo, Big Ben is an all-around athlete. So I think that's something that most people might not think about outside of Big Ben playing quarterback. Big Ben is a smooth basketball player. Yeah, that's surprising. I thought that maybe he's just going to be in a low block guy, not a lot of movement. But what you described was a guy that had handles uh, and moves for for a quarterback that we saw on the field, able to sling it around. You were with him. You got to see him sort of at his peak and his apex physically. Obviously, you guys had so much success together. But, BMAC, now that you're on our side of things, what have you seen from Big Ben the last two to three years? How would you describe his game at that time? His game kind of transformed a little bit. Early in his career, especially when I was his teammate, Big Ben was my version of John Elway. Uh, I grew up a John Elway fan. Uh, he played the quarterback position a little different than everyone at that time. And Big Ben had his own style of playing quarterback during his prime years. And his ability to be elusive and make people miss, the pump fake. Think about that. How many quarterbacks have you seen utilize the pump fake like Big Ben? That was his thing. And then as he got older, his mobility wasn't the same. The, his aggressive style wasn't the same. He had to rely more on the mental standpoint of, the, of his ball game. And he executed that to the best of his ability. And even this year, with some of the criticism that he faced, you know, not really getting in the sound protect, protection from his offensive line, he still went out and fought. And one game that I would like to highlight for Big Ben this season, where we saw the competitor that he is and has been throughout his career, that Thursday night ball game against the Minnesota Vikings. If you look at the first half of that ball game, how they beat him up, how they sacked him, he couldn't get anything going. The entire offense couldn't get anything going. He never weathered. He stayed the course. In the second half, he came out and he was swinging. So in the first half, he was receiving all the blows. 
And some quarterbacks would tuck tail and be like, you know what, <laughs> let's get ready for next week. In the second half, he came out swinging, and he still got hit, but he kept delivering punches as well and made that game a a ball game, a tight ball game. Now, they lost, but looking at how he fought, that's the player that I always remember. And the athletic style of play wasn't there, but the mentality was still intact, and that's something that I took away that week. Like, man, Big Ben still has it. And that dog that he has in him is still there and forever will be there. One more before I let you go. Appreciate you joining us, BMAC. Looking at this team now, post-Big Ben, what do you think the team will do this offseason to try to get back on track for a new year? Tommy, you got to have a quarterback. I don't care what level of football you're playing. If you don't have a quarterback, you're not going to win. And when you don't have a quarterback, the field is not 100 yards. It's 150 yards. And sometimes, depending on how bad the quarterback is, it might be 200 yards. That's how it feels when you have to drive the length of the football field. So you got to get a quarterback. And it's going to be very, very difficult to do so based on where the Steelers are projected to draft because they're never a team that's in a top position to draft one of these quote-unquote potential franchise-like guys because they always do good enough to not be in a top-10 area. But they got to find a way to get a quarterback, a guy that is reliable and a guy that can instantly make the entire offense better because they still have some answers, uh, some questions offensively they need to answer. And it's going to be hard to be able to answer all those questions through free agency and through the draft. So they got to find a way to get a quarterback. So that's the most important thing for Pittsburgh. And I understand they're saying they may hand the keys over to Mason Rudolph. You know what I mean? And we've seen him sparingly as a starting quarterback. But if you do that, if you hand the keys over to Mason Rudolph and just going off what we've seen from Mason throughout his professional career in a small sample size, that division is quarterback ready, the AFC North. And even with the up and down play of Baker Mayfield, people probably would rank the Pittsburgh Steelers just at the quarterback position in the division dead last if you say you're going to start Mason Rudolph. And not saying he can't evolve to be a real strong contributor, a real style, reliable quarterback, but based on what we've seen, he's been up and down. So that's the most important thing right now for this organization. Knowing that Big Ben was going to walk away, what is next at the quarterback? Because like I said, if you don't have a quarterback, that field, field is no longer 100 yards, it's 150. BMAC, certainly appreciate it. I'm told we're not done with you yet, but we appreciate the insight on that story with Big Ben being a hoops baller. was fantastic. Again, Ben Roethlisberger taking to social media, calling it a career, putting it out on his words and his terms, but we've hinted at this now for about a month or at least two, especially toward the end of the regular season. Last game at Hines, last playoff game, and again, the Steelers putting this out shortly after Big Ben put out his social media post for everything you've done for the organization the city and for the game. Hashtag thank you seven.